are we're live. Are live. Hello. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Um, it's Charlotte and Jessica. We're okay. here um, at Aragon Wine Market in Pensacola, Florida. Yep. We've got people watching from all over the place, so we have to continue to remind you that we're in Pensacola, Florida. That's right. I think um, it's really important important for us to say where we are because we do yeah. have people joining us from all over the country and hopefully all over the world, like last week. So we're excited for that. I know. I'm yeah, and then we go. Get oh, there we go. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so um, we've got a great show tonight. Um, so it's exciting that um, we've got some uh, some Napa legends come in tonight. She's yeah, a, this is a legend, a superstar when it comes so, to like winemakers. Yeah. And, and I, of course, I always lean into female winemakers. I think it's so incredible yeah. to understand like always, you know, the history and where they came from, where we're going, and that yeah. you know she really is one of the superstars that you know led the, the forefront right. for female winemakers right in so we, we will introduce her um shortly and mm -hmm. we'll get into that and um that's gonna be super exciting um there's a couple of little things that we want to tell you about that's happening here at aragon mm -hmm. uh, at the wine store we are still uh have some curbside signs up out front so if you're not feeling comfortable coming in um i know things are more opening up but you know everybody's yeah. got their own feeling about it and so if you don't feel comfortable just call the store um, we've got the signs, so you can just pull right up front. Absolutely. Um, we also, don't forget, we have parking in the back. So there's plenty of parking in the back. Um, you're welcome to come in if you can't find any parking up front. Um, park in the back and just, yeah, no, no problem at all. Absolutely. Um, the other thing I want to mention is Father's Day is coming up. It is. Not here gift yet, baskets, but we, we do, can make them. We can make gift baskets. We do um, some local delivery. Call us for the details. Um, but I mean, what does your dad want? I mean, come on, yeah. you know, like nobody needs any more cologne or shirts oh, or ties another wallet or another wallet, right? I mean, maybe your dad maybe. does, but he Actually, really wants wine. <laughs> Shout out to my dad leading into uh, Father's Day. My father, my sister, and I bought him a hot pink and black wallet from probably one of the school sales that we had when oh, we were in elementary, and he carried it. <laughs> For so long that it that's was a good dad. He's a great that's dad. That's a good dad. Great dad. So yeah, I mean, he dad also he wanted wine. Yes, <laughs> a nice port or I mean, we've got obviously got great so stuff. many great yeah, options sure. available. Come in and let us hook your dad up. Um, I think that um, and that can be kind of challenging sometimes for people. They're like, I don't know what he wants. I don't know. I think it's always good for me when I think about building a gift basket for someone. What's your price point? Do you want to spend seventy five? Do you want to spend one hundred and fifty? Yeah. You know, you want to spend three <laughs> hundred? Let me do it. All our gift baskets are customizable. Absolutely. So you just tell us, you know, yeah, what hey, are you looking for? Just gonna get a bottle. Definitely. Just gonna get a bottle. Definitely. Um, we are gonna continue the virtual wine tastings um, into June. We weren't sure. Um, we we're kind of following along with the bars, and so yeah. um, this. State hasn't opened up the bars yet and so we're kind of gonna follow along with those um, rules and so um, we've got something on deck for next week that we'll tell you about later and then uh, we'll have something for um, the first week of June and then we're gonna um, see where we go from there um, I think that we'll do some sort of hybrid maybe in the courtyard yeah. uh, perhaps taking some reservations that sort of thing um, before we get back to our, our our total normal when people just come into the wine store and and we get to see all of our friends all at once, yeah. um, we may have we may do some sort of hybrid. Um, but anyway, yeah. we'll see where we go from there um, and and how this works tonight. The virtual wine tastings, which are awesome, yep. and um, I think people have really enjoyed it. I see Mari's watching. I see um, Judith is watching. Hello. Um, Thank you guys for tuning in. And if you have any questions, um, make sure you ask them for um, Julie. She's going to be um, joining us shortly. How it works is um, we tell you what wines we're tasting. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get out the one for the first one we're starting with tonight. Oh, yeah. And um, so uh, everybody can open. I don't know. Sometimes some people got both bottles. Some people got um, just one. Either way, open your bottle. Start drinking with us. And um, hey, Allie, and um, and uh, we'll we'll talk about the wines. Yep. So without further ado, we are going to add um, <laughs> Michael Fix into the group, uh, our local wine bow. Oh, there's Julie. 
Julie Johnson and Michael from <laughs> Winebow um, are here to join us. Hi guys. Hello. Hi, how are you? Okay, this is this is me getting ready to reopen, right? Hi. But do you love it? I love one of our playing it safe. One of our house made this. Isn't this great? It's perfect for us. All out, all about outdoors and everything. It's great. And it goes, look how well it goes with your that is you know, incredible. Color coordination. Color coordination is all. And then I'm gonna have to do something with this one too. I'm not quite sure of it. I have a different one. Maybe I'll do hot fuchsia with love it. One. I don't know. But for now, you know, we're all set. Oh right? yeah. We all know what we we all know we've been training for this. We're responsible beverage people anyway. And um uh you know, like why right. We're 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 ready, but we've got we're doing stages. It sounds like you're doing stages because we have kids and families and dogs and yeah. stage all of this in so everybody feels safe and and ready to keep drinking, right? Isn't that it? <laughs> Absolutely. So, so um, we can play responsible, and we, yeah. you know, we want to make good choices. It's not just about us that feel healthy and, and and you know have a healthy life. It's about those other people in our lives. Charlotte and I were talking yeah. about this earlier that there are people in our hearts that are near and dear to us that we inter interact with the public every day, but those people that are in our lives that don't need to still. So yeah, want to make sure we're making good choices and we yeah. gradually open back up and follow all the guidelines as set forth by the state. And hopefully yeah. um, we get back to full blown wine tasting soon enough. And we will. And we will. So yeah. I, we just kind of skipped past the fact that we have oh, a Napa Valley <laughs> legend. I know. I'm like, can we just backtrack for a second? Uh, Julie I can do a shuffle. I can do a shuffle toes. Ready as the rest of the. Who is this person? Michael, we need. You can be an honorary groupie now for the three women, right? There so. we go. Yeah. <laughs> When Julie was here last, I had no hair on my face and all the hair on the top of my head. So she probably was wondering who this person is when she was here about maybe two years ago almost. So, but uh, but yeah, welcome. Please introduce introduce Julie. Go ahead, girls. Ladies, sorry. Yes. So, <laughs> so Julie um, is the best. She yeah. um, is, like I said, Napa Valley uh, legendary winemaker. She started uh, Frog Sleep, I believe, in 1981. Mm -hmm. And Tracy Morris in 1999. Nine. 1999. Yeah. yeah. And so, I mean, that's pretty, that's pretty heavy. Yeah. <laughs> Tell us a little <laughs> bit about how you got in the wine business. Well, it, you know, I, this is a great story, actually. It, I call it, it's entitled Love and Osmosis. Because I, <laughs> I was truly, I'm from California, I went to school in Maine, and then I went to school in New York, because I was actually in public health in New York, in the mid, I mean, in, in Maine, in the mid 70s. In fact, I had a lot to do with administering the swine flu program, vaccination program in Maine, in the mid 70s. So I feel like I've got a little connection Then I went to New York to be a learned I became got another degree became a public health nurse anyway how did I get into wine I met a young man who had had been making wine in the Finger Lakes in New York I'm a big fan of up there I'd been going there for a few years he was making wine for a small winery had come out from California and he introduced me to a Bull U 68 private reserve la da da Lambrusca, dollar sixty-eight a bottle. I'm never going back. You know, and so God, I had to marry him. <laughs> and and so and so I did. So he got a job offer back here in Napa in 1980. And before we knew it, I was started practicing nursing out here. And he um, he took on the job at Spring Mountain. And then we hooked up with an old buddy of his, Larry Turley, and we sold our motorcycles. Mm -hmm. And each family had a motorcycle. And we bought, we had enough money then to, they were nice motorcycles. They were R90S BMWs. Oh, wow. And, and so we had enough money to buy grapes. So we bought Sauvignon Blanc from Spotswood and a little bit of Zinfandel just because they said, well, you're getting our Sauvignon Blanc. Don't you want to make our Zinfandel too? So I said, sure. And then we had, of course, buy a label, which we didn't have any money for. So we we bought a, we, a, a designer, worked for us, Charles House, for 
two cases of wine and two hundred dollars. And that became wow. <laughs> uh, American Institute of Graphic Arts best. And I'll show you. There's a, there's a reason for talking about labels. So it was two hundred dollars and two cases of wine, and then he won the American Institute of Graphic Arts award. Oh and wow! While all during this time, I was still doing nursing, but somebody had to start the office. Yeah. So I started the office, and really not still not knowing very much about wine. But we started the winery and. We just, we just were very lucky to be in on the early wave. And so I just had an opportunity to start tasting, a tasting group that I belong to. Um, we have been tasting together every month for 40 years, if you can believe it. And so we've been oh, wow. having, we've been That's having, and it's a, it's a, That's fascinating. It's, it's a who's who of Napa. People like Kathy Corson and Donnie Dyer and, wow. you know, Dana Pagano, they're they're just Bruce Cake Bread, Bruce and Rosemary Cake Bread. This just a huge. So I, you yeah, know, you sort of like for that. Absolutely. <laughs> at that at, at that moment, it's sort of like okay, I guess I'm in the wine business. But it just kept on building, and I I, I ended up leaving nursing because it was a full time job in in spades. And then we bought this beautiful property in Rutherford in 1987 and it was frog's leaps first vineyard vineyard oh, wow. and we immediately turned it organic so we started the three-year process to farm organically which yes that was way before the green way before yeah, on the green bandwagon yeah. but was be we had young kids and it was the thing to do yeah and, and then, must have been one of the first people Yes, we were actually. We were the first to be certified, but Spotswood and Mount Hill Vineyards and uh, Madonna, there were there were places that were definitely all moving in that wonderful direction that so many Nap Green and other places are moving in that way um, the, today. So I don't know, sort of like at what moment, at what I say, love and osmosis, because the more you get into wine, I mean, that's what you guys do, right? You bring wine to people, and the more you taste, it's like exercising your sensory muscle, right? The more you taste, yeah. the more yeah. you, the the more you get involved. The more you have people like you who suggest, uh, here's something. I have a good story for you, actually. The very, so I'd met this young man, winemaker. I came back to Palo Alto for part of the summer, and I was supposed I had. We had gotten together at a Mondavi concert, and I thought he st stood me up, but then all of a sudden he comes in with Larry Turley, and Larry Turley is the ER doc for the Mondavi concert. Well, the the um, you know at that point there were a thousand people there, and we but I we were all ushered to a wonderful little patch right in front of the stage. Wine came out, cheese came out, Kirby Man came out. The full moon came out. It was sort of like, oh wow! Oh, I'm, I'm I think I'm Never in the business. Yeah. Never forget. But I went to I went to a store, Beltramos, not long after that. I still didn't know what I was doing. I still hadn't bought much wine, and I went to the store, and the, a man there asked me three questions: What do you want? You know, what are you doing this? What What are you buying wine for? What do you usually like, and what do you want to spend? Yeah, and those three magic sentences <laughs> sort of I've never forgotten that, and I've not forgotten that it was a Charles Krug Chenin Blanc either. But it was um, it was a magical lesson to me about how somebody could be kind and not look down their nose like, why aren't you asking for some specialty Alsatian reasoning? You know, don't you know that? And, and, you know, so none of the patronizing thing that you can get into. No. And, um, it just really helped open the door. And that's what you yeah. guys do. That's what's so wonderful. Absolutely. Absolutely. That is definitely our philosophy here is, um, yeah. you know, we, we kind of fight the um, perception of being a fancy store because we're in a nice area Absolutely. and we look nice the store is nice looking it's not you know jam-packed with just nothing that there's wrong with that mm -hmm. either but um so i get the question all the time well do you have anything under 
you know, under $20. And it's like, well, of course we do. You know, are there always people that have that perception that there not, isn't anything in here that is affordable. And I think that that's definitely something that we work really yeah. hard at trying to break down that barrier of, but those questions specifically, when I first started, I came from basically 10 years in the wedding and event business doing corporate and executive events, but heavily led by property management. And so when I joined the team, it was, well, I don't know if I, I know a little bit about wine, but you know, and so those literal questions were one of the first things that Charlotte said to me that changed my whole perception of me even coming into the store and just opening up that it does not have to be this, you know, nose in the air kind of experience. Yeah. What are you, what are you drinking it for? Are you, you want to spend a Saturday on your porch in 90 degree weather? Are you <laughs> cooking an amazing paella? You know, like what, what is your food that's forward? You know, what do you normally like? What do you not yeah. like? Because you can tell a lot about a person by what they don't like. Um, and then also, you know, what are you looking to spend? Because there are amazing, beautiful yeah. bottles at 23, like this Porque No. <laughs> uh, in, um, Pensacola. And there are other bottles that are higher or lower that are, that are great for whatever you're looking yeah. to do. Yeah, totally. That's a wonderful way that uh, yeah. you got started. Yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's a wonderful thing because, you know, I only make about 3,000 cases. And so what happens is I'm a... I'm a wee little pixel on my, just. I love my distributor, Michael, but I'm a wee little pixel on your screen. And so I really depend on people like you, Charlotte, you guys to say, oh, you know, I yeah. know what you like. You know, you come in, I'm going to give you a couple bottles of this and a couple bottles of that because I know what you like and this is what you usually order. Yeah. But all we need is for that customer to say, well, what do you know about anything that's new or what do you think I should try? And I... I want to be every, I'm not greedy, just every once in a while, I'd love to be your, that, that bottle. I appreciate yeah. this today. I appreciate this immensely because I can't, I can't tell you. It's tough. You know how tough it is. Oh, it is yeah. really tough right now. This is 10 yeah. weeks. And we would usually have, I mean, we have beautiful open spaces with a hundred and let's see an olive grove that was planted in the 1880s. That's how old this property is here in Rutherford, oh, 1880s. We know that grapes grew here at that time, probably petite straw, maybe a little Zinfandel, but definitely petite straw. And one of the wonderful grapes in Port Cano. And so there's a certain sense of, of heritage and mostly outdoorsy. You know, when, when people come here, you can be, three feet away from the vineyard, you know, and, and we try to get people in that experience. It's not just line up six glasses of wine and right. here it is. Thank you very much. Yeah. It is, hey, here's why and here's your drinking the wine that was from this particular vine two years ago, you know, to try to get people closer. So when people aren't here, uh, yeah. if the dogs are lonely. The dogs are losing weight <laughs> because they're not yeah. Because they're not getting, you want to see one of the dogs? Can I show you? Absolutely. We always. Uh, so I know dogs um, feature a whole lot. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh my goodness. Look Jillian. at that sweet baby. That's, that's and Kava. Have, the golden Retrievers. Oh. Yeah. We have three Golden Retrievers, all, all wine. Um, Boozy Rouge, uh, Kava. <laughs> Which gives you a little clue as to what I would drink on a beach or any time. Yes, absolutely. Me too. Yeah. Me too. Uh, there with you. Diva, Diva La Bubbly, especially in Florida right now. Definitely. And then also um, a new little one named Bria. So we wanted to have sparkling. I mean sparkling. Oh, that's so, so cute. We wanted to continue. So it's our fourth, fifth generation of golden retrievers now. Fifth generation. That's the first. Yeah, well, I will say that um, I lost the love of my life in September. Um, my Havanese um, Pluso, which you'll see yeah. pictures in the store. Um, and I fostered over the holidays another Havanese that was from a puppy mill. And then in January, I got a new baby. <laughs> and so, um, so I'm dealing with puppy puppies right now in my house, one puppy in my house right now. So, um, we're we're definitely dog friendly here as well. And I, when I saw that on your uh, your when you're on your website, I was like, oh yeah, Absolutely. all right, they're right there with me. You mentioned the dog you, out in the, you know out in the vineyard, and we have a beautiful courtyard out back that we look forward to opening back up again. Um, you know, it's perfect for small events, but it's definitely such a beautiful 
place um, to sit out back. Definitely dog bustle. friendly. Definitely dog friendly. So we're excited to get that going again. Yeah. Yeah. Well, here the dogs are out and we encourage people to bring dogs. Um, that is actually going to be one of the things we're going to step ourselves in. So we're we're going to be able to be, we've been open for drive ups for our wine club yeah. members, but, we, mm -hmm. but we're going to just stage it in because we do have places for people to eat. But, oh, have the best machine ever it's it's the it's the all-time attack dog of sanitizers so you get even close and it goes you know and you're like it has a blue light and everything and it's like okay we are ready you know <laughs> and, the sanitizer i love it we have our we have our our masks and our but you know it, it has it's been a challenge and it's been it's sure. been lovely here it's been beautiful the right now the roses are blooming um, as you know, I make a rosé as well, and I've named, I so love rosés, and I so love roses, but I named the rosé after my two favorite rose varieties, um, Ingrid Bergman and Julia Child. Oh, if you have, if you're, if you're, if you're a winemaker like I am, and very much into food, and you know there's a rose, a rose out there called Julia Child, it's like, I'm on it. So anyway, she's, she's been blooming. After a rose, an Evelyn rose. Oh, nice. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, why don't you, um, why don't you tell us exactly where you are located in, uh, you're in Napa. I'm in Napa and I am specifically for those people who have not been here. Napa is about interesting thing about Napa. Napa only produces about 4% of California's wine, but we make a lot of noise, right? And we've been, working together it's a very collegial wine company wine community and so napa is only about 35 miles long from the bay the san francisco bay to the south to up to up north the borders are alexander valley and sonoma county and i am on the western edge of napa county at the top of the mountain that's behind me it's sonoma sonoma county starts so if you go up about 2,400 feet, you get to the top of the mountain right behind me. So I'm on the west side and I'm north of Napa by about 20 minutes and I'm south of St. Helena by about 10 minutes. So I'm actually right kind of in the middle of the Napa Valley. I'm on the middle west side, Rutherford Bench. And the wonderful thing about where I am um, is that it's a slope. And you would really never know that you're in the Napa Valley. I'm about a mile and a half west of Highway 29. So, okay. and that's so a lot. Of, that really, how you farm on that really affects the wine. I was reading a lot about it, and I'm sorry. It's a beautiful space. Well, no, all the west side in this area is on uh, geological formations that are about 500,000 years old. The mountains to the, the Vaca range to the east is about four and a half million years old. We're at, that's crazy. The Andes are about a million and a half years old. And then we're on a 500 year old bench land. It's a lot of rock and rubble and loam that is well drained. And also it gets late afternoon shade. So the combination of late afternoon shade in an area that can get 95 to 100 degrees of of uh, temperature in the middle of the summer or towards harvest and a well-drained slope is just it well you know it's i would say it's all about the terroir it's all about the place and right. that's i think what makes rutherford pretty famous when it comes to cabernet um i'd like to say that i decent effort in on behalf of zinfandel zinfandel used to be the, mo the most widely planted in Napa, now it's only two to Napa. which is another, which is another part of Port Cano. Mm -hmm. Port Cano is Zinfandel, Cabernet, Petite Syrah, and Petit Bordeaux. So in this are my estate Cabernet right here, and my estate Zinfandel, both about 50 year old vines, and then some beautiful old Petit Syrah vines from up in Calistoga, the northern part of the Napa Valley. When I say northern, I don't know where I'm pointing. It's, I'm pointing that way. I'm, I realize I'm I'm out zooming. It's about the same for us. Here, but, um, thank you, thank you for trends. Yeah, but it's, yeah, we're, yeah. We're yeah I definitely we wanted to go to that. The the blend of these grapes is absolutely yeah. beautiful. The Zinfandel yeah. and the Cab. And so is this. Um, is it fun? Was this maybe uh, was this one of your first um, 
endeavors under oh, I can or what, what, what was your first um, production? Yeah, I can go back a little further. So, so after 20, after 20 years, I've been here on this property for um, almost 13 years. I decided that I wanted to do something smaller and more personal, mm -hmm. and I wanted to do something completely different. So I hired three, because I wasn't want, making wine. I hired three winemakers who were crazy enough to go with me. I gave them access each to two tons of Zinfandel from essentially my front yard here, this vineyard, which at this point is now 50 years old, right? So at that point, yeah. and I had them each make their own Zinfandels from the same grapes. So at the end of the second year, we had three Zinfandels, three different winemakers from the same place put them all in a box and sold them as a three pack. Three tastes of terroir, tres sabores. Also, oh, known, oh, for the three, also <laughs> okay. known for the three flavors in every glass, right? Yeah. The vine, yeah. the terroir, the place, and then most important to toast, the good company around the table, around the wine. Awesome. I want to toast you. Yes. I'm dying for it, I have a glass of wine. We wanted to take a note for that. We have a few more people that joined us just to take a note. And we are here at Aragon Wine Market. We're doing our virtual wine tasting with Julie Johnson from Trace of Ores, joining us all the way from the Rutherford bench that she's been explaining so beautifully to us. And, um, and we're trying Trace of Ores, which is this for right now. This is their incredible red blend. Porque um, no. Porque no. That's and, right. Uh, why not? So, so, the, so why there's three. Porque no. So those three, well, why not? I mean, those three winemakers, we, I envisioned it as a four year. So, um, but after those two years, we bottled the 1999. And in 2000, 2001, we said, well, in 2000 already, I said, hey, I have a little bit of extra wine left over. You guys, you know, it's hundreds of kids. We just made 500 cases, but mother nature didn't, you know, we had extra wine. So I'm like, I didn't plan on that. What what am I going to do with the extra wine? And they said, well, look, why don't you just put it all together? That's and we awesome. all kind of went, well, <laughs> why not? And then we yeah. all kind of went, literally, well, okay. well, you know, like, why not? Well, 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 and, that's and, awesome. And, what a great story. I love <laughs> that. I love that. Yeah. That's, so that's to that's me, the, to me, it's, it's the Trace of Waters is actually from a beautiful old um, I think probably a lot of people in Florida know this song. It's an old Latin bolero. It means it's from the, uh, the, the original song is Sabor a Mi, my taste, my flavor, which is kind of a winemaker thing. You know, it's it's a creative process and you have your own way of singing the song, right? And so, or tasting the wine or what your sense is or what time of the day is it? Am I ready for this or that? Am I ready for a bolero and some porque? No, am I ready to be... In jazz club land, with, you know, something serious, single vineyards. So the the idea kind of stuck. And then so we decided, hey, let's just do this and have fun. And immediately the blend was very revolutionary. Year two. Yeah. Because yeah. Zin so and Cab was really now it's now it's much more. Some outrageous uh, blends um, that is, um, and I do a blend. He's also, um, I do a blend that is that it, it's a Saint Laurent and Malbec. I see you have the periodic table of wines behind you, so if you go find you can find Malbec pretty easily, but if you you can also find Saint Laurent, so we're experimenting still. But this was in 2000, this was experimental wine. Now, I want to show you why I was talking about the label. Because this is this is kind of fun. This is the original label. Oh, that's cool. Can you oh, see wow. that? Are you ready for what this is? Yeah. This this is originally a cocktail a cocktail napkin. Oh. It's a hand woven wow. hand woven yeah. cocktail napkin. These are a couple of the other these are a couple of the other napkins, all different that's colors. So cool. It's really that's just from a, cool. a beautiful shop, a great shop in Berkeley, and. Um, I took it to one of my favorite designers and he took it down to the local you embroider it shop and had it embroidered and that so right highly subliminal like cocktail napkin that's <laughs> I love that and, um, so this one I know we want to have plenty of time to transition to the other one so this one yeah 
I'm a foodie, obviously. I know Charlotte's a foodie. Yeah, yeah. We love food. So to me, you know, I immediately said, I want to have an incredible paella with this. Like, oh, what, would yes. be, what would be your, like, go-to dish with this wine? As soon as I tried it, my first mind, I mean, the first thought in my head was paella. Mm, yes. You, you really nailed it. Paella, along with mole. Are two oh, of my favorite are two of my food groups actually, <laughs> and um, you know I know what the others are. They're, they're, they're even more bizarre. But every year, as a matter of fact, Trace Boris has an annual pomegranate and paella party because I grow more pomegranates than anybody in the Napa Valley. I have about fifteen different varieties, and so we celebrate the harvest every year with a pomegranate and paella party and zoo. Zuzu comes and does live fire uh, paella. And it's just, it's a wonderful party. And I agree completely about the match and why. It's because it has got a lot of that, a little bit of that saffron. It's got some chili spice. It has the savory nature of the, especially that crusty roasted long-term yes. rice and the tomato. So there's good acidity in this wine. Nice yeah, acidity, and acidity and tomato is right. And and often then you get the meatiness from sausage and from chicken. And then you get, and this is interesting, David Rosengarten a long time ago wrote a great book, Red Wine with Fish. And I think that you can actually chill this down a little bit and put it with a grilled fish or a paella fish or, yeah. or a prawn in that case. I and, agree. and mussels, you know, oh, okay. it's... It just all together, there's a brininess and a saltiness to paella, of course, but there's also good acidity in this wine. And that yeah. that yeah. makes the match. And if it, it's not to your taste, use a little lemon or a little more salt. And those two things make the world go round as far as it goes. And, and some of the shreds are kind of trendy right now. So, I mean, it kind of hop, can hop on that trendy uh, train as well. It was a super yeah. hot day and and we chilled it for just a momentary you know just a few minutes just because it is so hot here today in florida and i really see that i mean when i was growing up um and my family would make paella um it was kind of a mixture of chicken and sausage and it would have the scallops and some seafood elements and the fish in it and i could absolutely see this pairing perfectly with that um i could see a pairing perfectly with some kind of even a, a grilled fish, like a snapper or something, yeah, like a, yeah. a any kind of number of things yeah. that would, that would well, work well. Why not? Yeah. Why not? Why not? Well, no. I mean, well, this this website. wine goes with lots of different foods. So you know, I mean, why not pair it with grilled sausage or fish, duck, or a salad duck. or dessert? I mean, it could go with everything. I mean. That's what's great about the wine. It really is. It's it's and one of the reasons why I love this wine and why I wanted to talk about it and have Julie here is that it's perfect for something like Memorial Day weekend, where everybody's cooking all sorts of different things. There's like a hodgepodge of items a lot of times when we have cookouts. We're not sure what kind of bottle of wine to open. Oh, for sure. Especially for red. Yeah. Just open, yeah. just open enough. And I think um, open pork. No, we do. You know, you can do. You're doing a lot of barbecue. This is a great rib wine. Um, I love the use of paprika and smoked paprika and cumin. And on our website, actually, you can find some recipes that are really great with this. But you know, this is our Zen, which, like I said, the the, the you know is a little bit more like a like a salsa. This is really, if I was listening to me right now, I might be listening to Nora Jones or I might be listening to some other jazz. And, and it, the idea is that it's also smooth, but it's pure, it is pure Zinfandel. And it's pure Zinfandel on the lower alcohol side of Zin. So a lot of people say, oh, I don't know about Zin. It's going to be too jammy, going to be too plummy. Well, there's one thing that's true. I am not a raisin fan. In fact, I will pills to keep Zinfandel can easily be. Is there somebody else wants some over there? Okay. I can be it looks I like can be I can be down yeah. in the dumps yeah. and the wonderful Zinfandel raises my spirits because a balance in like this, this is hundred percent 
Rutherford, 100% organically grown. Um, and awesome. also very interesting, both of these wines are from vineyards that are completely dry farmed. So there's oh. no irrigation for these for these particular That's vineyards. A super trend right now as well. I know yeah. for people that don't know what that means, like, and I'm one of them. What does that What does that mean from a dry farming standpoint? What is your process? Well, it's the it's the new old. You said it yourself. Yeah. It's it, and it's and it's a progressive farming. Um, the idea is that we didn't used to have irrigation. We really took care of our soils. We really took care of planting cover crops and putting, making sure that the that the soil was mulched and respected. And when you put the amazing thing about Mother Nature is when you put all of those elements together, cover crop, um, mulching, minimalizing till, making sure that you're taking care of micronutrients, adding compost, making compost, which is what we do, and adding compost. You put all of those elements together with a pretty healthy respect and out comes, voila, pretty darn good grapes. Absolutely. What happens with dry farming, meaning no additions of water other than Mother Nature, is that the roots, vines want to go for it, right? And so they put their roots as deep as they possibly can, and they spread out as well. So their chances of interacting and communicating with soil microorganisms and with other vines and with water is very high. And to me, that a balanced vine is what the result is. And a balanced vine leads to great grapes. Easier to ferment, tastier, a better acid balance, something that all of those things lead to long life, which is what we're talking about when we're talking about a zinc. Yeah. This, this is, is exquisite. Yeah. I love how so, you call it the, the new old because, I mean, France, they weren't allowed to irrigate for many, many years. Only recently um, were they allowed to irrigate. And so to go back to the way that many countries have done it for so long, I think that's like super important. But now, now the difference is, is that you have great analysis. We have we have measurements. We have that's we have like, we're kind of a pilot a pilot station for a company called Vincense. And they, um, we have sensors all over down eight feet that give us a really good, good sense of what's happening. Mm -hmm. Moreover, we're all trying to sequester carbon. We're all, all trying to be water wise and reduce our use of California total drought right. state, you know. Yeah. Um, so forget about what you think about anything, you know, politically charged climate change or whatever. What's happening is a movement in 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 farming to to be as wise. It, it, uh, it's doing the right thing, but it's being as wise. And dry farming, if you can do it, some some sites no. But I mean, we have a 30 degree hillside that's in, with that much soil that's almost impossible uh, that we do irrigate. But the majority of our vineyard is we've mulched and mulched and mulched and cultivated the soil for 34 years now. And the result is seven feet of worm casings and it just it just works. And right. I just, I, I can't wait to get you guys here so I can dig up. I'm there, I'm so there. I'm bringing my dog too. His name's Francois. Yeah, <laughs> got, yeah. A puppy dog comes with me wherever I go. So uh, he'll be there, he'll be there to meet yours. You know, I saw a really cool, you know, you see all these amazing images online and on Facebook and different things and different memes, but I saw a great one when I started researching a bit more and thinking about this terroir and like how you farm that was about like literally farming versus sustainable agriculture. And the two imagery was, it literally was depletion versus doing everything that you possibly can on a plot of land to re replenish and refurbish and, and give back to the earth every bit of what you're pulling out of it. And I think we've touched on this a few times yeah. over the last few weeks, but it's like mother nature is a cycle and we're always talking about the, you know, if the moon is a cycle and the sun is a cycle and the earth is a cycle. So why in the world would the, the ground not be a cycle? Um, and I think it's such a beautiful perspective to really understand that like what you're doing now or what you did 50, you know, 30 years ago, 50 years ago, certainly 
you know, since you've taken over this plot, but you know, in the last 30 years, what your practices have done have now provided you with what you have now and where it can go um, based upon those practices. Well, in an, in a in a time when there are lots of replants of vineyards, these are almost 50 year old vines and they're, because I have not pushed them to be super uber ripe at harvest and because I've not pushed them for production, we get only about two and a half tons, the way we prune and farm and thin. Um, so for the Zinfandel, for example, I go through the entire eight acres of Zinfandel that I have here. I only make cases. And one of the reasons I do is because I go through the entire vineyard and I thin out shoulders and bits of clusters and balance the vine about three weeks before I start picking for the red grapes. Julie, and how many, I, I'm sorry, we broke up just a moment whenever you said, how many cases of this do you produce just again? 500, just 500. Oh, yeah. And in fact, in 2017, less than that, because it was a very tough year. But I use I use that first, that green harvest, and that's what I make my rosé out of. So at that point, the entire growing season, and we just started suckering, we just started removing all the extra shoots and other things that drain energy away from the vine. When we drain, when we take those extra shoots off, we, we start the process of focusing the vine and helping, the vine is all over the place. The vine is, the vine is, is sort of like a, um, you know, it, it, some an organism with ADD. It's like needs to be refocused and, and pushed into a certain sense that ah, I'm happy with this. I'm calm. <laughs> and when you do that in the vineyard, you're re, you're giving the vines a focus. And the last bit of focus that I give for this one is to take off some extra fruit, balance the vines. I get rosé, and what's left is. A Zinfandel, because Zinfandel, Zinfandel ripens on the clusters very irregularly anyway. You'll see that. If you guys hopefully are following my Instagram, it will show you a really good yeah. cluster example of this. So it doesn't, Zinfandel, you know, like if you look at Cabernet, Cabernet is so well behaved, you know, it might as well have a suited tie on. It's just all, <laughs> you know, I love Zinfandel is a little, the reason why I love Zinfandel is because it's quite a bit more of a free spirit. So and when I'm tasting, it. yeah, when I'm tasting Zin to try to figure out when to pick, which is really my main thing, um, then this is what the three wine the three winemakers that I had basically taught me to make wine, and they taught me what elements I loved. For example, um, thinning out the vines. Um, for example, um, only using thirty percent new oak. Uh, for example. Um, using about 50% uh, wild yeast as part of this wine because it gives that extra verve. A big one is that I don't crush any of these grapes. So usually I would sort them, put them through the destemmer, which spits the, spits the uh, stems out one way and the berries into these bins. We only ferment into these little four by four, three quarter ton bins, but everything is hand punched down. All of the juice and the grapes are mixed together three or four times a day during fermentation by hand. That's a very gentle process. So we learned that and we learned not to crush the, break those skins in the very beginning. And I think that that adds a lot of spark and verve oh, and, yeah. and good smooth texture to this wine as well. So I learned a lot from those winemakers like and now we've been able to keep doing it. I like how you describe wines uh, with personalities. I, I think that's really important. And I think I'll take that oh, yeah. to store with me when I start describing wines to people here. Yeah. Well, they do kind well, of yeah, have well, personalities. Think, I was going to say, think about how you raise your children or your animals, you know, and, and what type of person as a, as a somebody who's raising somebody, what do you want to be? What do you want to instill in them? How do you want them to grow over time? And grapes are the same way. Grape vines are much, very much the same way. And then a wine similarly would be during its process and also during the during the time that it's in the bottle and, and how you're storing it and everything. Sure. But that's the same thing and how you nurture it, how you nurture the everything from the soil to the bottle. It's the same as like what we talked about, a personality like raising a child or, or, a, or a beloved dog. You know, you, you really want to 
if you put good in, you get good out. It right. sounds very yeah. simple, but it's true. So it's not something, it? it's not a placebo effect. It's a real effect. Absolutely. Absolutely. And Michael, don't ever ask me what my favorite child is or my, what my favorite <laughs> wine is. I won't be able to tell you. Because, you yeah. know, but you know, that's everything. It's, it's your time and place and the company you're with, Trace Savortis, you know, the vine, the place, and the good company. It's like, it's really different when my kids and I gather around my, where I am right now in my kitchen. Um, my husband and I love to cook and everybody loves. So the rule here is pour a glass for the chef. Well, we go through a magnum before, you know, everybody's cooking. So everybody starts. So we're, we're always like, how many bottles of wine should we have tonight? Well, you know, <laughs> but, but it's, familiar with that. Really true. it's really true. No, I can't play. I have three, I have three kids and now I have two grandchildren and um, oh. I can't possibly, I can't possibly pick favorites because, um, but I do know they all love coming here, which is, I mean, that's what makes it so lonely right now. We're optimistic about the future, but we can't wait to see, you know, people, yes. people walk, walk, walking in the, walking in the olives or out in the vineyard at, um, everybody and will if you be are having enjoying. company walking in the olives and coming over to enjoy this Zinfandel, you know, we talked about the Porque No and the Paella obviously like jumped out to me. What jumps out to you is something to pair this with. Cause I think that's something definitely that our customers really love to know. Like, well, wow, because we're all foodies here. Yeah. We love food. Yeah, yeah. What you know, to me, this is vastly different, and and it's much, it's much heavier than the porque no, which porque no seems you know fun, and this one seems a little. I don't want to say serious because it's still fun, but um, I mean, I'm it's, I'm I'm like thinking beef. Where's the beef on this one? You know, well, I want to get the I'll, leg, I'll, but you tell me. I'll, I want to Yeah, I'll tell you. I need to send you my lamb meatball recipe. Because I do make I do make little little lamb meatball appetizers with pine nuts and onion and parsley and currants little currants. And I, the secret is I soak the currants in pomegranate liqueur. I warm them up and soak the currants in pomegranate, and then I douse the I douse the meatballs in um, a mixture of pomegranate juice and pomegranate uh, molasses. You know what pomegranate molasses yeah. is? Yeah, it's maybe let me show you. Some people don't. <laughs> I don't know, but I need to know. I know. I'm like, getting this is, know. This is can you see, see that? This is this is one of those wonderful kinds of things that you can use. And I love the I love the piquancy of the fruit. It's not very sweet. This is not palm wonderful. Um, and very, very definitely. There's there's a there's the acidity and a lovely um, piquancy of fruit that's wonderful with Zinfandel. So I love that. And also there's a great recipe on our website that's with duck. I love Zin with duck. Uh, I, love, yeah. I love Zin with pork chops. I think Zin yeah. with pork chops brings out the sweetness of the meat. Um, and there is just simply, then you turn it over and do a different kind of thing altogether. You know, then you're maybe using some thyme and um, some other kinds of savory herbs like that. Yeah. So Zinfandel, Zinfandel is very versatile. Zinfandel is, oh, oh, you know. Great. So I think that. Oh, I, I think you need to remind everybody, everybody that um, you do have a lot of recipes on the website, and, uh, yeah. and because being a foodie <laughs> yourself, you know. Well, I probably came to wine through food because I, like I say, spent 20 years in the business <clears throat> Maybe without, so. with, without making wine and then switched and spent 20 years in the business making wine now. So it's been, but I don't think I ever pick grapes without thinking, what am I going to have with this? Originally, I think I got maybe some of my palate because I used to go do, you pick blackberries, you know, in, in like the uh, Watsonville, yeah, Santa Cruz area. Well, you pick blackberries where it's kind of hot and it's kind of hot and dusty and you're like putting more blackberries in your mouth until you just get done. And then you pick enough for your next pie and a bunch of, you know, other things. So, so Pix, you were going to, or Michael, you were going to say something and hop in there. Okay. 
Yeah, you can tell. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Most, most people don't have that problem. My wife would tell you most people don't have a problem hearing me. Um, but I was going to say maybe uh, uh, Trace Boris is one of those places that's one of the coolest places to visit as a food and wine destination. I tell a lot of people that are Napa Valley travelers, they always say like, hey, we've gone to these wineries, that winery, where should we go that we haven't been to? Trace Boris is one of those places that I always mention to people as far as being a food and beverage, really a cool place to visit. But I wanted Julie to talk a little bit about paella and pomegranate, uh, which is in October. October. Is that right? Is it always usually in October? Yeah. It's in October. Yeah, and and so hopefully we'll be able to do it in October of 2020. So maybe you could talk a little bit about that festival and, and what that um, entails, because I think a lot of people might be interested in that as they look forward to traveling. There in October, I will be there with my dog. You said oh, okay. Well, it's, it's the twenty. It's the. It's always the third weekend, third or fourth week, third weekend in October, and it's after most, usually most all of the grape harvest, and we're just getting into the pomegranate harvest, and it's before the olive harvest, and so and before the lemon harvest, and so it, and so. We do so many things with pomegranates um, and we do lots of other foods. We, um, one of our most wonderful people here, uh, Doris Guzman is, is um, kind of our dog and sheep and goat whisperer, but she also has a crew of ladies who she brings in. So she does fresh tortillas along with Zuzu Paella. Yeah. But what that's the things that we do that's, we, we take, we get samples of all of the different pomegranates that we grow. Now there are, 1700 varieties of pomegranates in the world and of course thousands of grape varieties in the world i mean it's something like what a thousand grape varieties in, in sicily alone <laughs> but um you know so in california it's like we're all so new there's there are not as many things to explore but there's 1700 varieties of pomegranates we just grow 15. Oh, yeah. we but we knock we knock them all out and we have a tasting of pomegranates. So from pale pink, almost light strawberry watermelon color and flavor to something deep, dark, and and just almost a, almost a religious experience um, is pretty crazy. You know what I'm realizing? I have to plug in my battery. I will be right back. I'm sorry. Oh, that's okay. We're almost, yep. <laughs> We're almost out of time anyway. Say, so we kind of have to transition into yeah, I mean, Julie has been so incredible Amazing. to hear all that she's got to say. Um, if you haven't tried the uh, Porque No or the Zen, I mean, uh, honestly, honest. Oops, oh, I think, I think we just lost her. her she's um, dying. Yeah, it's okay. But um, the wines are incredible. They are. Oh yeah, oh, there we go. The wines are incredible, um, not terribly expensive, but um, I feel bad we didn't get to say I know, a, a goodbye to her, but um, I think okay. then she may have lost battery because she's I think she completely did. gone Sorry, from the gone, screen. But, but anyway, I mean, we could have experience. talked to her. I feel like we could have talked to her all night. And she was, she's lots of so great much to say. <laughs> so interesting. Uh, oh. Oh no, that's just so, our feedback, <laughs> Michael. But I will say that <laughs> um, stuff on um, stuff on deck for next week. We are going to do the Yolumba wines there from Australia, and we're doing the Viognier, which is my favorite white grape, and we are doing the uh, uh, Shiraz which is um, traditionally known for, um, oh, let me just grab her back oh, in yes, here real quick so we can oh, say she's an back, official she's goodbye. Back, she's back. I'm sorry, oh, thank you. No, it's okay, what we were saying is that we could listen to you all night, but we really are probably closing up right now. So. <laughs> we're almost out of time, <laughs> but my goodness, this has been so yeah, wonderful. I mean, been, I mean like, literally we could have listened to you all night because um, I got so much information and so many interesting stories and, probably a lot more than uh, than we scratched the surface on um, with um, all the stuff that you can tell us. And um, I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to just 
plan a trip out there yeah. and bring my little yeah. car and, uh, and uh, well, sit around the campfire. Well, let me, uh, let me just share with you how much we would love to have you here and anyone who's listening and uh, how much I appreciate what you're doing for people. I think it's great. You mentioned that you're going to continue some Zooming. We're definitely going to continue. Um, coming up from us, um, some live entertainment, a tour oh, of nice. the Pensacola, a tour of the Pensacola Museum. They've got a special project that paired Porque No with one of the pieces of art. And the curator oh, on June on June sixteenth, you're going to get a a dinner time tour of the Pensacola Museum, one part of their collection. Um, we also are going to be zooming internationally with. Um, a woman from the Rhone uh, and one of my best friends, Donine Dyer uh, from Meteor, yet to be d confirmed as uh, Zelma Long, one of our really, you talk about me being incredible. You know, she, so anyway, we're setting up some things. So just stay tuned to Trace the Boris if you all will. And yes, you know, tune yeah. into Z to Instagram or whatever vehicle you're using because we've got some, you know, this is a time to be creative. We're, we're together, we're yeah. careful. We're drinking a lot of wine. <laughs> Yay! Yes. <laughs> I just want to post you and say thank you very much. Follow us and uh, thank, thank you. you. Oh my gosh. Thank, thank you so thank much. You so much. It's been been such an honor to be here. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you, yeah. thank you Michael. Welcome. Thank you, Miguelito. <laughs> wow. thank you. See you soon. Ciao. All right. Thank you. See. Oh my God. Okay, wow. <laughs> I have chills. I know. So she is super cool. And um, so she please is. remember that there is um, the museum. Um, uh, I'll get some more information there. and figure out and what so that we'll, event we'll is. That out on our, um, yeah. We'll put that on our social media as well. Certainly, we would so. love for you to pick up that one in advance of that event. So you can yeah. enjoy it going to, you know, maybe the night before, before you go to that event, so that when you're just getting your little sample at the event, you actually have had to enjoy an entire bottle before. Right. Um, but definitely, we'll get some more information on that and uh, go from there. But back to next week. So, and definitely, <laughs> definitely, though, too, um, because we want to say about everybody wants to travel. I know we're doing some housekeeping issues. So I just want to get it out there. This is one of the coolest wineries you will ever visit. Julie yeah, is awesome. Exactly. The team is awesome. The wine is incredible, as a lot of people have already seen. When we know come October when that paella festival is going on, you everybody's going to be wanting to do some fun stuff. Oh, yeah. Definitely go out there and try to visit that winery because you, I think okay. you will not be disappointed. You will. It will be a. There's a reason why we love the way that sometimes wines behave uh, with um, some of our special things that we do in our lives. You're going to have that experience when you go to that winery. So you really, really, really should go there. That's just my little two cents. Sorry. <laughs> Love it. No, no, no. It's the wine no, guy. Sorry. I mean, you know, no, I mean, you yeah. said, I mentioned earlier that I, I immediately thought of Porque No, and it was paella because I grew up with my father making that. And so for me, that was the first dish that popped out. And you immediately said, oh, they do a pomegranate and paella festival. And I was like, dun, dun, dun. <laughs> like, I must know what that is. Yeah, that's that incredible. sounds like an incredible experience. And that sounds like something that, I know that there's somebody else in our, you know, customer base or somebody else in our, you know, viewer base that that's going to reach out to and it, that would give them that same like, oh my gosh, I want to go do that. Yeah, for um, sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And we've got um, the, uh, Tracy Boris in stock, um, both the Porque No and the Zen. Um, if we sell out, which we have done quite often in the past, um, we can easily order a special order for you. It's no yeah. problem at all. So. Um, but you go ahead and get in your wines for next week's right. um, uh, virtual wine tasting. Like I said, we're doing the Yolamba, which is Australian, the yep. uh, Viognier, my favorite white grape. It's um, got a very aromatic quality to it, and it gives them maybe the perception of sweetness without being sweet. Heavier, um, heavier like a Chardonnay, but not like a chardonnay um if you came in and asked me for a chardonnay but told me you were going to be on the boat all day i would say this is your wine that's a good that's a good way to say there you it. go you're going to be on the boat then, perfect what do we all think of when we think of australia we think of shiraz yeah um so um same grape as syrah just mm -hmm. called shiraz because australians got to be that way 
And um, so we'll be doing these two wines. They're both reasonably priced at $12 each. Yep. Um, so I would suggest getting both <laughs> and course. drinking them with us um, next week. Um, we will have, Fix help me with Camila's last name. Camila Zorila. Zorilla. It might be. It might. It might be Zorilla. I don't. I. I have to double check on the double L pronunciation. Double L. But um, I call it because it's Camila Zorilla. I call her Cozilla, like Godzilla, because she's just she's cool. She's just gotta have a cool nickname. So she calls cool. me Fixie, and I call her Cozilla. Um, <laughs> but. Really so cool to mention about. Ones, so I'm quite sure she has yeah. a good name. Really cool to mention about Yolumba too for people if they're picking them up in the next few days in advance of next Thursday is this is one of the oldest wineries in Australia since the 1850s. Um, it's also sustainably produced. So we have a lot of vegan friend. These are vegan friendly wines also. Um, just like Trace of Boris, there's, they're sustainably produced with holistic, you know, as far as keeping the environment happy as well, um, which, you know, to have a wine for 12 bucks, that's also trying to make sure their vineyards are healthy and not using pesticides. That's almost impossible these days. So they're, they're a really cool winery and people hear Shiraz and they think it's going to be like this big, heavy, crazy, like wine. You'll be really, really, really surprised when you try these wines. These are not what you expect. From a lot of times the Shiraz are like, 14, 15. This is 13.5. So don't feel like it's going to like kill you. Yeah. Much the same way that these Zinfandels were not like these big and the Petit Syrah and the Pork exactly. and they were not these big giant like, you know, punch you in your face wines. They were really, really food friendly, really palate friendly. And Yolumba is very much similar to that as well. Like you're going to have a Shiraz that is not this big behemoth that you're used to from, you know, 2002 when kind of yeah. Shiraz yeah. became a thing. It's not like that anymore. We've gotten rid of most of those wines. They don't really yeah. exist anymore. Yeah. Well, they do, but they're there are other places. They're they're yeah. in big. Well, uh, stores. I think we're hitting the end of our time. Thank you so much for joining us once again. Don't forget, yeah. you guys, it's Memorial Day weekend. You're going to be out on the boats, social distancing safely, of course. So we have yes. canned wines, canned champagne. We've got a bunch of canned wines. All kinds of canned stuff. Oh yeah, stuff. take it on the boat. Take it on the take boat. It to the beach. 100%. We've got uh, curbside pickup. Yeah. So call and say hi. I'm call about us. to go out and get on the bridge. I need X, Y, and Z, and we're going to run it out to you. So, yeah. Thanks so much for tuning in. Yeah. And uh, we'll see, see you, you next again next week. week. All right. Ciao. Bye.